is just a light. By Tenactin. If the burning and itching of athlete's foot keeps coming back, reach for Tenactin, the brand doctors and pharmacists recommend most. And by Phillips 66 Super Clean Gasolines. Good things for cars and the people who drive them. And now let's meet tonight's top five finalists. Starting from the number five position and making his fourth consecutive appearance in the championship round, it's Tony Westlake of Edmond, Oklahoma. His opponent in match number one is powerful Jim Pensack of Mayfield Heights, Ohio. Looking for his fifth career PBA title and beginning tonight's action from the middle of the pack is 35-year-old David Ozio of Viner, Texas. Qualifying in the runner-up position is talented Ron Palumbi Jr. of Erie, Pennsylvania. And nailing down the top spot this week is 30-year-old Dave Ferraro of Kingston, New York. He'll need to win just one game to capture his fifth career PBA championship and $18,000 in first place prize money. And welcome everyone to Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin for the championship round finals of the $125,000 Lamode Open. I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Red Carpet Lanes. And uh, although Tony Mandridge has yet to sign with the Packers, working with me once again this evening is a man who could obviously fill his shoes with no problem, PBA Hall of Famer Mike Durbin. Well, thank you, Denny, and I definitely work for less than $2 million a year. Too. All right, now that we've got the contract straightened out, let's get back to bowling. As far as Westlake and Ferraro are concerned, at the risk of sounding redundant, these guys are on the show every week. Well, they certainly are, Dan. It's four weeks in a row for Tony, three out of four for Dan. Ferraro. I think it's just a case of two quality players on a fantastic hot streak for both of them. Tony Westlake in a position here this evening that if he would qualify next week, he would tie the all-time record for championship round appearances in succession. Five held by Johnny Petraglia. I asked Tony earlier this evening if he had any chance at all at making four, and this was his response. No, I never never dreamed I'd make four in a row. Uh, I think everybody's goal is, is uh, just to make one in a row is, is, is great. Uh, <laughs> uh, making four in a row has been unbelievable. It's uh, been tiring. Uh, I haven't had much time to myself at all the last, really the last six weeks. And uh, I'm just glad I'm here. And of course, also glad to be here as well as powerful Jim Pensack of Mayfield Heights, a player that I think is just about ready to walk through the door as far as the champions are concerned. Well, it may be, Denny. You know, he bowled in a league with my son in Shred Falls several years ago. Jim has always had the ability to string strikes. His problem has been staying away from the open frames. He's got to win four games today, and he's got to throw a lot of strikes and, like I say, stay away from those open frames. Concerning Dave Ozio, proven, tested, experienced, a player starts from the number three position. He lost from the top seed earlier this summer, he certainly wants a win. Well, he won once last year. He's looking for his fifth win. We talked to him earlier today. He seemed very, very confident, says he's had to overcome a lot of adversity, make a lot of subtle changes, and he thinks he can do it for three more games tonight. Two words basically describe the year that Ron Palumbi has had, consistent and frustrating. He's made the championship round finals, the top 24, on 14 occasions, yet this is only his second appearance in the final five. And it's his first appearance in the final five since uh, the second week of the season since Torrance. He had a streak there where he went seven consecutive weeks where he made the top 24 and uh, wasn't able to make the top five. You know, his goal then is to win $100,000 and in order to win $100,000, you've got to win championships. So he's putting pressure on himself. Psychologically, what is Dave Ferraro thinking about at this point? He's been the top seed now twice this summer, but he is 0-3 in the championship game here in 1989. Does that have an effect on his play tonight? Well, I think it has an effect on his mind. He can't put those things out of his mind yet dave is an extremely confident bowler he gets up there and he just feels he can beat anybody and he's proved that he can do it he's got to win one game tonight to get his his fifth title all right so ferraro up on top in the championship round position in the top seed spot but before we get to that title game the opening match coming up next year from red carpet lanes in green bay featuring red hot tony westlake and jim pensack back with more right after this in Washington has come through. The Americans will be much displeased. Observe. The argon activated radio optic laser light. Amusing for it, but the party demanded Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Where is Boris? He is enjoying a cold one. <laughs> Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. 
My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out, and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tamactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tamactin puts the fire out for good. How far can you drive your car on Phillips 66 Trop Arctic? 100,000 miles. Just by changing your oil every 3,000 miles? Okay, more than 100,000 miles. Oh, sure, Trop Arctic can protect your engine in the heat and the cold, but over 100,000 miles? How about 200,000 miles? Come on, how far can you really drive on Trop Arctic? 250,000 miles so far. Phillips 66 Trop Arctic. Long live your car. I'm sure you know that anyone who's selling their house is hoping for one thing, to see one of these. But how can you be sure your house will sell? Well, one real estate company has the answer, ERA. Because if they don't sell your house, they'll buy it. So if you're thinking of selling, call the right real estate company. Call your local independent ERA broker. Welcome back, everyone, to Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Opening game of the $125,000 Lamode Classic. A uh, familiar face on ESPN this summer. Tony Westlake starts the match. Championship round pair 15 and 16. Boy, isn't this the Tony Westlake show, Denny? Think, yeah, pretty much it is, yeah. The man with four consecutive championship round appearances, one victory. And uh, on a hot streak right now, on a terror has struggled during the practice session and uh, starts out with a Brooklyn. Uh, that's an indication that he's obviously not lined up on the championship pair. Well, he told us earlier that he was lost. <laughs> he was dead lost. In the and his price said, I said, are the lanes any different? He, he says, no, I can't strike on either one. So uh, I think he needs to move a little deeper myself. Uh, deeper, I mean, further left toward the third arrow. it off a little short but trips the four pin with his opening offering and he is playing in extremely deep in around the third arrow or deeper and we'll give us a look at his style five steps here watch the high back swing real quick he gets it back there now the short pivot step there he drives through nice slide and snaps that follow through it big man getting bigger I think uh, snap is the key word there. Really rips it at the bottom of the swing. Tries to create some area, and when he gets his kind of a ball reaction, you know, he can lead the big tournaments. He led the U.S. Open this year. Comes out of the gate and smashes the rack with a double on 15. And I was just thinking, I'm looking at his shirt. It's raining wet already. If he happens to go four games tonight, he may need to change shirts. Well, change of jersey, perhaps, sometime yeah. along the way. So a quick double for Pensack who opens up a 10-pin lead over Tony Westlake. Tony rifles it up about the 11 board and comes back with a strike. Well, that lane seems to be holding for him, and he, he said earlier he was trying to hook the ball, and he stopped that. You see the familiar style of Tony Westlake, very short first step, and then basically it's four steps after that. Head very steady. Look at the backswing. A little over shoulder height. Now watch the follow-through. Snaps it up. John leaves that 10. His wife, Mary, looks on. Nice adjustment from the last shot on that lane. I don't know. He struck the one before. <laughs> oh, come on. Went Brooklyn the last trip and uh, was lucky to get away with the next soft 10 this trip. What a remarkable run, though, for Westlake, who now has already won better than $87,000 this year. Been a torrid pace this summer and uh, uses all of the lane to pick up the 10 pick. There's never a doubt. He had it all the way. Jimmy Pensack, 30 years of age, 5'10", 195, and played some high school football. And you see right now the pressures of playing on national television. He'll be soaked through and through by the time this one's all over. Liz looks on. She looks a little nervous, doesn't she? Yep. Yep. Excited to be here. I made the trip in earlier today. Mayfield Heights, obviously, a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. And he used to be from Richmond Heights. Yeah. 
Hartford Heights has an outstanding wrestling team every year. Well, they gave that one room. Gave it room, and uh, you could see those white out-of-bounds stakes uh, out there about the seven or eight board all the way down the lane. You get it out there about uh, right of seven or eight, and uh, it's going to straighten out on you. It doesn't come back right. One, two, four. It wants to get it to the left of the head pin, then have the ball run down to cover all three pins. Perfect. So no problem with the one, two, four. Pensack spares up in the fourth, and he's open up. An eight-pin lead over Tony Westlake. A very good match here in game number one. We'll be back with more from Red Carpet Lanes right after this. 100% pure, solid rock. Silver Eagle Records announces the perfect cure to those rock and roll blues. Formula 45. 45 certified solid rock hits. is not sold in stores, so order now. Looking for something to pick up your spirit, add life to your party? Find it with Formula 45. 45 solid rock hits on four LPs, three cassettes, or three CDs. Write or call now. Ah, Ferraro, the unlucky number of 13 after the opening round, but boy, ended up number one when it was all said and done. And it looks the way he only had three leaders in this tournament, uh, Columbia, Pensac, and Ferraro. Tony Westlake starting in 47th. It was an uphill climb, and uh, last night went down to the final game in the position round, and old Tony shot 264 against Mark McDowell to solidify his position on the telecast. Unleashes a shot and then just exit stage left for the five pin. We've seen that strike a lot of times for Tony. Never ceases to amaze me. You watch the professionals in warm-up. Just a couple of shots before the telecast begins, they look as lost as you could possibly get and come right on and start throwing strikes. I used to be that way. Did you? Only I stayed lost. Is it the concentration? Is it? Is it <laughs> I never know. I never did figure it out what the lights went on. <laughs> you bowled in the dark for many years, my friend. Oh, well, that one crosses over. And uh, lucky to avoid perhaps more than just the 3 6 10. He's really struggling on lane 15. Brooklyn, light in the pocket, and then the 3 6 10. Very inter interesting shot here from above Tony. See the left arm? Now watch him pull the left arm back. Wrist kind of cut there as he let it go. A sigh of relief. And so. It's an eight-pin match here midway through game number one. Dave Ozio qualifying number three. Ron Palumbi Jr. in the two slot. And the top seed this week, Dave Ferraro. Nice shot. Snap that weak 10 out of there. The two wives sitting next to one of them. I suppose they talk back and forth. Shot of Jimmy throwing the shot here. Watch the follow through. Snaps it right up here. Now watch the six pin. Second to the right. You're going to see it go to the sideboard. Come back out and get that ten. Anytime you see that, you know that the player had good lift, good fingers with the bowlers call in the shot. Almost looks like he's got a little hold area out there as well. If he can swing it and tug it a little bit and still hit the pocket and carry, he's going to have a big night. As soon as you say that, the one, two, eight, ten pops up twice in a row. He's left in that, uh, left that, missed a headpin on the left lane. We talked in the open, you know, that he has to avoid these open frames. He hasn't been tapped yet. He wants to get the ball to the left of the headpin here and send the headpin right into the ten. The ball will take out the two and the eight.
Not enough. Not enough. So he's open there. And gives the what lead to Westlake sitting on the bench. Boy, the left lane seems to be the key for both players here, Ted. Now Westlake goes from trailing by eight to leading by four after the miscue. Let's see if he can jump on the opportunity here. Uh -oh. Gives it right back to three, six, seven. Tony's trying to play a very tight line, throw the ball very straight right down the 10th or 11th board. He just gets the ball left here. That one hit about 12. And going high right now, and he gets no good break. Has to hit the three pin thin and slide it over. This is a very makeable split. Hit it twofold. He gives it right back to Penn side. So it's just uh, unable, you know, unlike Tony Westlake, unable to take advantage of an open frame from an opponent. So both players open up in the sixth, and now it's back to a 10-pin advantage for Jim Pensack. And uh, the left-hand lane has supposedly been the tough lane for Tony Westlake. It appears to be the tighter of the two. He moved in a little bit there. Still went high. Tried to make an adjustment. The ball still did exactly what uh, the player's been talking about. The ball hooked early. In other words, it hooked too soon on the lane for him and he just doesn't know what to do if he gets it any more room it doesn't come back for the 610 it's really a catch-22 situation when you don't have any swing and if you set it a little short it hooks early that's the position he's in as we can see right here you see he moves in toward that third arrow it's about the 13th 14th board there and the ball bites right there you can see it Bites at about uh, 35 feet right there, which is just too soon. So it's been a struggle in the six for both players. A 10-pin lead right now for Jimmy Pensack when we return to Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Whole grain nutrition is important, but of these leading cereals, only one is made with 100% whole grain. Only Wheaties. Just ask Carl Hershiser. Better get your whole grain. Better eat your Wheaties. When the U.S. swim team needs eardrops, there's no competition. Murine eardrops for wax removal. Murine, the official eardrops of the U.S. swim team. Step right up for a big show of savings. The Carnival of Values at True Value Hardware Stores. Clean up with a pack of 15 True Tough yard and trash bags, just $2.99. Then pack up with a Rubbermaid rough tote container, only $6.77. This master mechanic label maker, just $2.99, comes with three rolls of tape. And for $3.33, get this Casio eight-digit solar calculator in the Carnival of Value Circular and at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. ESPN presents the world's ultimate driving machine. You'll see coverage of the U.S. Open, British Open, PGA Championship, and year-long excitement from the PGA Tour. There's also the precision of the Lady Linksters and fun from tee to green with those swinging seniors. The world's top golfers take on the year's final major test, the PGA Championship, Thursday and Friday on ESPN. Ah, yes, wonderful gentleman there representing uh, La Mode Active Wear, Alan Gieler, a vice president, and uh, you won't find a funnier gentleman in the crowd this evening. Having a little fun, he was asking for makeup just a couple of minutes ago. Well, I, just, I need some makeup for that bald head up there. <laughs> uh, great, great host. Uh, marvelous gentleman who has lots of fun with the bowlers, an outstanding golfer in his own right, but he enjoys the sports world. No question about that. All right, back to live action for Pensack. He leads by 10. Would love to double up and extend that. Doesn't trip the four this time. Again, a little bit short with that shot. Didn't get it out to where he wanted to. And leaves the four pin. Got a nip and tuck match right here, you know. Not high scores, but it's certainly close. Led the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open earlier this year at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma, only to lose... Mike Aldi in the championship game, 195 to 178. Open frames undid him there, too. And uh, he had several open frames in that game, two or three. We see his form from above. Looks pretty good right there. 
There's the scoreboard. Ten pins exactly. Both players on spares. Three frames to go. Better shot. Boy, and it snapped. Miss the head pin, miss the head pin, throw it where you want to, and it goes high. Right now, what's going through his mind is, what do I do in this lane? And he's got to finish on that lane. Mike, one of the characteristics that we've seen throughout the summer is the first game, game and a half, the players really struggle with the lanes because they're changing with virtually every shot. Then once the conditioner settles in, they seem to be able to get lined up off of it. But, uh, what do you do in that case? Do you pull out a ball that maybe hooks medium and throw it up the second arrow and just try and get nine spare? Most of the players, I think, they will, will try and increase the speed and maybe the loft a little bit to hold the ball into the pocket and just force it down there. And usually what happens then is if you do hit the pocket, you get tapped. Biggest shot of the week coming up for Tony right now. He's had good success on lane 16 for the most part. One errant shot there in the sixth frame. We see the light shaker here. Ball. Remember, the one pin has to hit the two, and it barely got it there. That's right. Old wall shot there on lane 16. The mystery lane, though, for Westlake has been this one right here. Moved in. Nice, good adjustment. See, move in a little more loft, a little more speed, which is what you're talking about. Ball held pocket, flush for the double, and this one's turned around a little bit. He now leads by two. And we're going to see him from above. Well, no, we don't. But watch the loft. Gets it further out of the lane and threw it just a little bit harder, and it just barely holds. Watch the four and the seven. The two just clipped the four as it went by. A lot of room. Ooh! Well, you have to trust it on the PBA Tour if you want to come up a winner, and uh, that was uh, savings and trust on that shot. I'm telling you, the, the head pin barely hit the two pin on that. It was almost missed it as it was going by. Watch it here. The ball's turning very late, coming in. Watch the head pin. Just nick the two in the bucket. That's called a bucket clover. Day. All right, so a strike in the ninth. 223, a possibility of Jimmy Pensack would go all the way. And a possible uh, 225 for Westlake. This is for the lead. What a pretty shot that was. Oh, he stayed with it beautifully, Mike. When it left his hand, he liked it all the way. All the way. What I like, though, is he makes this tremendous shot under pressure. His best of the game, right over about the 16th, 17th board. The ball finishes hard at the end, right solid is he didn't get too excited there because he knows he needs one more. All right. And what you can see him thinking right away, one more. More room. Got that light shot again. Well, that one came back from nowhere, and Westlake realizes the gravity of the situation now. He's going to have to at least double. He's got to strike twice. Pensack. Takes a scan of the scoreboard, realizes with an X here he's at 223. He now leads by 18, and so for Westlake, it would have to be at least a double and nine if he strikes here. Well, that was a double short, yeah. The major work is done, though. He's going to force Westlake to double a game of 220 and a nice comeback for Pensack, who strung together three strikes in a very pressurized situation. We know Tony can strike under the heat. Can he do it on lanes that he's struggling on? He wanted to make sure he got it up there with good speed. He just pulled it. So Pensack realizes he'll get to bowl at least one more game, and he's basically defeated the hottest player on the tour at this moment. Well, Tony, the last three weeks have been uh, first, the second, and the third. I was thinking maybe you go fourth tonight. But <laughs> Tony Westlake will uh, now move to $91,700 on the 89 season, and... Uh, 
Now, uh, the big question, can he go to Cheektowaga through way lanes next week for the PBA uh, Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship and coax his partner into the championship round to tie Johnny Petraglia's record? Well, he's got two tasks there. I mean, he has to make the, the top 18. There are 2018 finalists on both sides, and they, then they're paired up one with one, two with two. Then he has to bowl well and hope his partner bowls well in order to make it. So it's going to be a tough task. So the dream for Westlake finishes up early. 2.20 to 2.02, the win for Jim Pensack. And when we return, we'll take a look at average builders and the law. Oh, man, on the field, I'm either tossing passes or I'm getting crushed. <laughs> Go off the field, give me the fit and feel of Haynes underwear. You know, nothing's ever going to help me forget the licks I took. But Haynes gives me something no linebacker ever will. Comfort. Real comfort. Now you wear what you like. Nothing else feels so right. Nature's light. Giving life to sparkling streams as only nature can helps create the clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. And a look at the numbers as they were established this week at red carpet lanes. All bowlers averaging just a fraction over 200. The righties and the lefties about uh, four pins apart. But look at the numbers to qualify in cash. Yeah, kind of low this week. Only 204 to get some money out of this tournament. And only 210 to make our top 24. So players had tough time this week. Size of the field a little smaller uh, as of late at 143. And our qualifying leader, Ron Palumbi Jr. at 41-48. He actually led the first three rounds. It looked like he might lead the entire event, but he did slow down a little in match play. Yeah, he still qualified second, so he bowled well all the way through. Pretty steady all week long for Palumbi. And uh, there you see the high games of the week. David White shooting 300 in the qualifying. He needed every pin of that because he qualified 23rd. Only made the finals by like two or three pins. Well, <laughs> taking advantage of that big game when you get it. And a uh, player on our telecast this evening, David Ozio with a big 289 game. So only one perfecto here this week at Red Carpet Lanes, but a very competitive tournament, a tournament where many players had an opportunity to finish in the final five. And uh, the players that were successful this week, without question, utilized the loft most of the week. That was the key word here at Red Carpet Lanes. And our Mike Durbin now takes a look at the loft, and now it's uh, able to lift your average on average builders coming up next. If you'll notice on tonight's telecast, all five of our finalists are getting the ball well over to the foul line onto the lane. And that's what I thought I'd like to talk about for tonight's average builder. That is, getting the ball out onto the lane. Several different questions come to my mind when I want to talk about this. The first one is, well, why do so many proprietors have signs in their bowling centers that say, don't loft the bowling ball? The second question that comes to my mind is, well, how far is too far to get the ball out on the lane? And the third question that comes to my mind is, well, why do we need to get the ball out onto the lane at all? And the last question is, well, what's the proper distance to get the ball out onto the lane? Let's take them one at a time. The reason proprietors have signs in their bowling centers that say, don't loft the bowling ball, is quite simply because they don't want us taking divots out of their lanes. You see, a lane is made up of maple wood and pine. The first 16 feet right out to right in here is maple wood. Maple is a very hard wood. Then there's a mixture in here of maple and pine, and we get to here, the rest of the lane is pine, which is a very soft wood. Now, if I throw the ball out on the lane and it lands on this pine, it's gonna put a dent in this lane, a dent that's very expensive to repair. So obviously, getting the ball this far out on the lane is too far. But I think we can go beyond even that. Anytime I throw the ball out on the lane and it has a trajectory that goes up and down, I'm getting the ball too far out onto the lane. What I'm striving to get to is an even trajectory, kind of like an airplane gliding in for a landing. That's what we want to get. Well, why is it necessary to get the ball out onto the lane at all? Well, there's two answers to that, I believe. The first is that if I don't get the ball out onto the lane and lay it down at the foul line, I think I have the tendency to let go of the ball with the thumb and fingers at the same time. I kind of baby it along. And if I make an effort to get the ball out onto the lane, it enhances my chances of getting my thumb out first and my fingers lifting the bowling ball. 
But there's a second reason, the reason that most of our pros are using tonight. And that is, as I get the ball out onto the lane, it delays the hook and makes the ball go further down the lane before it starts to break. And that's what our five finalists are doing tonight. They're trying to delay that hook so that the ball will break more at the back end of the lane. Well, what's the proper distance that I want to get the ball out onto the lane? And by the way, this lane that I'm walking on has no oil on it, so I'm doing no damage to the lane at all. I believe that the proper distance is somewhere right around 18 inches to 30 inches, right in this general area here. And the two bowlers on our telecast tonight that I think come closest to that are Tony Westlake, who's been so red hot lately, and the bowler coming up in the next game, David Ozio. Well, I can just hear someone out there saying right now, well, Mike, no matter what I do, I just can't get the ball over the foul line. Just, I can't do it. Well, I have a little training exercise for you that I think will help you learn to get the ball the proper distance out onto the lane. All it takes is a little towel, just like this towel here, and you lay it out on the lane, just a couple inches over the foul line like this, depends on the size of the towel right there, and now I'm simply going to try and deliver a bowling ball on the lane without hitting the towel. And by the way, about 30% of our league bowlers, when they first try this, are going to hit the towel. Now I'll just come back and get the bowling ball here. And all I'm thinking about is just making a normal shot, but I don't want to hit that towel. Remember, when we get the ball out of the lane, we don't want it to go up and down. We want a nice, even trajectory, like an airplane gliding in for a landing. And the distance that we're looking for is somewhere around 18 to 30 inches. We'll see you again next week when we'll have another Average Builder. And while we're on the subject of planes, a couple of uh, top guns coming up next year at Red Carpet Lanes. Jim Pensack and the Wizard of Oz, David Ozio. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. A few words on reading for success. Things are happening so fast right now that the business magazines are history. I need relevant information every day. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-228-1900 for this special journal offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. Call 800-228-1900 now for the Wall Street Journal. One of the great advantages of working with Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the country in almost every major city. I prefer helping someone to selling someone. To me, that's the Schwab difference. The reason why I like working for Charles Schwab, it's an incredibly innovative company. And there are many things you can get involved in. It's not just stocks and bonds. Call today for free information about Schwab services. 800-873-8900. The PGA Championship, which will be staged at Kemper Lakes Golf Club in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois, coming up on ESPN, live and direct Thursday and Friday, live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, the one-hour highlight show as well at 8 p.m., defending champion Jeff Sluman. See, I wonder if Cal Cavecchio will play. He just had that uh, the baby girl, Brittany, and, uh, of course, Sebi Ballesteros will be there. Greg Norman, will he ever win a major championship, perhaps this year? Well, he has won one, but he won the British Open. Yep, yep, yep. He should be about four or five or six down the line, shouldn't he? Jim Pensack with a 220-202 victory over Tony Westlake in game number one. Now has David Ozio next in line. to the heart and leaves only the three pin. A good break. He's in that danger zone, though. He knows if he throws it a touch too far to the right, it will not finish. So you can see him kind of squeezing a little bit on that left-hand lane. David Ozio, who's coming up as he wants Pensek shoot the three pin, left his rosin back over on the practice pair. Couldn't find it. Almost panicked in the NASCAR trash to get it for him, and he got it for him. <laughs> David's the type of guy, he's a perfectionist. He wants everything the same way every time. Trying to throw the ball slowly, and does, but gives it a little too much room, and uh, leaves only the two pin. 
kind of a safe shot at first. He mentioned that uh, speed would be a key factor for him here this evening. From Vider, Texas. Switches balls to shoot the two pin. Wants something to go straight at the spares. That went straight enough as it hit the thumb hole. <laughs> and was backing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic style of David Ozio, five-step player, very short first step, pushes it out a little early at this point, right at the top. See, it's right in time right there, perfectly in time. Nice long slide. Pretty bowler. Oh, Love to watch him bowl. Beautiful to watch. And the results are normally pretty good. Well, this lane has been tough for our first two contestants, and uh, Ozio gets a bit of a taste, leaves the 2-5 as uh, Lisa and uh, Heather are... Uh, a bit apprehensive at this stage. As Heather realizes she's on television right now. <laughs> she doesn't care if he wins or loses right now, right? Switches balls again. This is a 2 5. So it's a good thing he went straight there. <laughs> Backed up to make it. <laughs> Looks like my ball there, I'll tell you. A couple of spares for Ozio and Pensack oh. decides that he wants a fresh set of pins on the right hand lane and again the, to cover our rewrite rule for our viewers at home that the players are allowed only two per game unusual that he would take one in the second frame here without a strike up at all small check mark on our scoreboards reflects when the players have opted for a re-rack new graphic there breakdown gives you an idea of what they've done on the plane going back to trying to trip the four he was successful in game one with that shot but the four pin stand a little tight all the way he couldn't complain about his carry that first game he had a lot of variety of strikes and not too many of them solid his carry that first game reminded me of our scorekeeper Joe Berardi's carry Get that overhead view again. Finishing well behind. Look at how close the ball is to his ankle as he lets it go. And all the pros are that way. Almost looks like he's off balance at the line from that angle, doesn't it? It looks like they all are. I think it's just the angle of the camera. Mm -hmm. Real tilt to the shoulders. This spells that myth of being square at the line. And oh, boy, was that a dandy. His best shot, I think, other than that first strike in the tenth on the left-hand lane. Now David's had two warm-up shots, so to speak. Now he needs to get his act together. Pretty shot right there. Heavier fingers, but still the soft speed. That's a tender touch there where you're trying to lift the ball with heavy fingers, but maintain slow speed. Yeah, because the characteristic is probably to cut it off a little bit short in that situation. Or, or, to, or to accelerate the speed then. Yeah, exactly grab it at the bottom but, and, uh, and that's what David likes to do he likes to throw the ball a little firmer he, he's, this is an unnatural shot to throw at this slope that's a hurry no fingers that time he just didn't get the same lift he did on lane 16 two four five stands on lane 15 no double if he just struck there he could have opened up a lead in this match Ron Palumbi Jr. of Erie, Pennsylvania, qualifying in the number two position, our top seed from Kingston, New York. Dave Ferraro, the second time he's been top seed in the past four weeks. Sinozio with a nice conversion of the 2-4-5. So both players settling in here in game number two from Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The finals of the $125,000 Lamode Classic. Give your kids the competitive edge in their favorite sports with America's best selection of instructional sports videos, only from ESPN. Regular $39.95, now just $29.95 each if you call 1-800-554-9000 right now. Top coaches in basketball, football, baseball, soccer, and tennis. Teach your kids the basics and help them develop a lifelong love for the sport and the winning attitude. Now on video cassettes that you and your kids can play again and again. Just $29.95 each and only from ESPN Home Video. Coaches. 
news like UCLA's legendary John Wooden show your kids how to improve their game and add to their fun. They'll learn the basics of shooting, dribbling, and passing, defense strategy, conditioning tips, and drills. $29.95 never let you do so much for a kid. Call 1-800-554-9000 for teaching kids basketball or your free youth coaches catalog of videos only from ESPN Home Video. Tennis greats get fired up in one of the last major tune-ups before the U.S. Open. See the final of the U.S. Hardcore Championships Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern, live on ESPN. Very unusual shot we're going to show you right here from the top. Same bowler. I think it's the same bowler, yeah. <laughs> on top, David Ozio. They look the same, don't they? Mm-hmm. It's interesting, though. Yeah, one, one on the right was a strike, and the one on the left wasn't. But what it is is that subtle hand release that sometimes even the most experienced eye can't see the difference, but you can feel that you didn't uh, do it exactly right. You know, one of the things that you can look at, there was the angle of the shoulders and the arm swing. And on the right-hand lane, he was throwing the ball right, and it hooked back. On the left-hand lane, he was better squared, and that's why it didn't hook, and he leaves the 2 four, 5 this one's trying to come back, and the 2-8 remains on the right-hand lane for Pensack. And no easy spare there. That's the adjustment for the four-pin. He was a little tight the last time, gave it a hair more room this time, and it didn't make it. Now, that conditioner could be carrying down the lane now, Dan, and causing uh, the ball not to finish quite as much as Liz looks on. She looks just as nervous this game as she did the last game. Well, at least she doesn't have her eyes closed. time to time when you're shooting that 2-8 and you don't know whether to shoot it cross lane or shoot it from the left and it really is a bit of a guessing game. Usually I try and shoot it off my strike target. Do you? If that conditioner is carrying down the lane then the adjustment is very very difficult because if you move right it has a tendency to go high. speed he was hoping that one might hold pocket and he talks to himself on the way back it obviously did and then he gets a break with the Brooklyn and again around the third arrow which is hooking too soon over to the Brooklyn side three pin goes to the wall and uh, Mike Albee be proud of that strike <laughs> our feature this evening is on Mr. Albee you don't want to stay tuned for that oh this time all right now you talk about the speed you get a little too slow with it and it goes right through the nose leaves the three six ten and i guess that's the one characteristic that you have to be careful of it's a matter of execution and david is not executing he knows that he's just not throwing he's made one quality shot so far in five frames trouble Ooh, what a break what a break to get that four-pin match thanks to this uh, uh there was no way to make it at that point and somehow they bounced around and knocked them all down <laughs> thank you he says pull out some more of that hair right well let's see if he can bounce back here and extricate himself from trouble midway through this one that was slowing through the nose and he leaves the baby split 10 pin thought about leaving but wiggles and stays and in my opinion, he's got to forget about this soft speed business and just go ahead and rip it and let those fingers fly and make his natural shot here and stop trying to throw the ball so slow and finesse it in there. Well, he had success earlier this week, but uh, not necessarily the case here tonight. Now yeah, he's really opened the door. So an open in the sixth for Ozio, his first of the match, and Pensack quickly leads by 17, could be 27 if he X's here in the sixth. He can put Ozio away with a couple strikes here. fingers that time he really caught all of that one watch the law he did that all with his fingers 
to see the result. That label's turning over, isn't it? And he knew it the moment he let it go. Big shot and could move to 37 pins ahead and really close the door on Mr. Ozio with a strike here in the seventh. but no trouble. Nice adjustment for the Brooklyn. Again, moral loft and further right. It's hard to get the ball solid in that pocket. Well, you can sense he kind of gauged up for that shot too, amped it up a little bit, gave it a little more room and still got it back. Playing the same ball at the spares. So many of them opt to use different balls at the spares. Hard and straight. So a spare up for Pensack, who has been steady here in game number two. Opens up a 26-pin advantage, courtesy of a double in the fifth and the sixth. We'll be back with more of game number two after this timeout. Party fever, party reliever. Pringles. Idaho Ripple. You got the fever for the flavor of a ripple. Showtime is so hot this summer, the competition won't be able to stand the heat. Showtime's hot fun includes lots of big hits, like Bull Durham, Married to the Mob. You won't see those on HBO. You'll also see Big Business, Rambo 3. You won't see those on HBO either. So sign up now for Showtime's hot fun. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. Ah, uh, yes, and peering through Mr. Ozio and Mr. Pensack is Dave Swagel, the general manager here at Red Carpet Lane. Had an outstanding tournament this week. He had a good pro-am and uh, good attendance. Was very pleased. Uh, he just wants an outstanding championship round here tonight. Well, they had better than 1,000 people participate in their pro-am. I think they had like 500 junior bowlers. It says a lot for the Wisconsin Bowling Proprietors Association. They've taken this tournament in hand along with... Lamode and uh, made a marvelous event here in Green Bay. Ozio, more speed, not a good result, and it's lost in space right now for the Wizard of Oz. It's just a pure execution. He's just not, not hitting his target. It's either wide or left. Not a big target, but he's just not hitting it. It's amazing. Last week in game number two when Westlake breezed past Warren Nelson, who Felt like he bowled a pretty good game. Ended up with 148. It seems like game number two in the summer finals is the low point, and then it starts to get better at scoring as we move along. Risa, his wife, looking on, and uh, she can keep scoring, knows that he is in trouble. If he's going to do anything, he's got to start striking right now. 212 is best possible score. shot there. And again, he picked up the speed a little bit, stopped trying to pussyfoot around with that ball and baby it. As we see the replay right here, watch the two pin, go to the sideboard, come over, and just give a little love tap to that four. And David says, thank you. says if you can trip the four pin, so can I. That was more of a karate chop of the four. That thing came rifling out of there. Fell, well, that's the big thing. 238 if Pensack goes off the sheet. If he strikes right here, he really puts the pressure on Ozio, but if he doesn't strike here, Ozio still has light. If he doesn't strike here, the best Pensack could get would be 218.
perhaps his best shot of the night <laughs> and leaves a solid eight pin. We've seen that before. Our tournament leader, Dave Ferraro, left one a couple weeks ago. Very costly to him. Oh, my goodness. That is a brutal tap, the solid eight. And I think you got a letter in the office this week concerning the solid eight, right. pin, didn't you? Hard and straight at the eight pin. Ozio, scenario concerning uh, his efforts here is throw as many strikes as possible between now and the 12th. <laughs> but he must strike here. Oh, another big break. Trip that four pin out of there. Keeps him in the match. Keeps him in the match. Watch the two pin. I think it's the bottom of the two. The butt of the two gets the four. And he's watching it. No, no, no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a reprieve from the two pin. This one changes the match a little bit. He leads, I should say, trails by 16. He cut it to six with one more here. Will he get up? but not the 10 pin. Very professional shot, but it just didn't quite finish enough. Had to have that one, Denny. Had to have that one. Good effort, and there you see the despair written all over his face. Warm out there under the lights this evening. So the solid 8 pin is apparently not going to cost Jim Pensack. Well, I guess that's a positive note. You hate to see any player get beat in the championship round appearance leaving a solid eight. Yeah. And uh... Ozio with a strike will finish with 191. Pensac would need seven pins. There's a 10 pin. A relaxed shot that doesn't matter. You get those fingers in the shot, the pressure. Not quite the same release. And uh, the 10 pin tells you that. So an open in the sixth, but a nice double in the eighth and the ninth for Ozio. Shoots 191, and there you see pretty much the story for Pensack. Uh, keep it out of the channel and hit the head pin. That's enough right there. He's a winner. Doesn't matter whether he makes it or not. Pensack eyeing the scoreboard, realizing that uh, his next opponent will be six foot two inch Ron Palumbi Jr out of Erie, Pennsylvania. And if he's lucky enough, perhaps, to get by that match, then he'll take on Dave Ferraro for the championship of the $125,000 Lamode Classic. Liz happy with the effort and uh, realizing that hubby Jim is going to get a chance to bowl at least one more game in this one. Plus, I guess, like any other player, he's had a couple of games to get lined up on the championship round here. 204 to 191. Ozio exits and collects a check worth $5,500 for the week's work, and that's uh, leaving David now just shy of $50,000 for the season. So coming up next, a feature on the tour's leading money winner, Mike Albee, who has already collected better than $280,000 here in 1989. Filtered. Only one has that distinctively clean, crisp taste. Budweiser, cold filtered and beechwood aged for over 110 years. You told me about the great jobs in the National Business Employment Weekly. And the help in landing them. And doing better on the job. So I really owe my new job to you? Well. Thank you, sweetheart. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first-class mail for $35. Call 800-372-3000. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. 
who does Mike Albee fear the most on the Pro Bowlers Tour? None other than Mike Albee himself. When I get out there on the lanes, as long as I'm paying attention to what I'm doing, and I pay attention to what I'm doing on my lane and what I'm bowling, I, I can handle any situation out there. When I start board watching and watching other scores or what everybody else is doing, I'm in trouble. I'm my own worst enemy. If I can pay attention to what my game's doing, I'll be fine. And Albie's been doing just fine this year, leading the tour with a record $282,000 and four titles. Albie got his bowling start thanks to an understanding older sister who let him tag along when she bowled in her high school bowling league. Mike joined the PBA Tour in 1978 and has won a singles or a doubles title in eight of his 11 years on tour. Yet he readily admits that last year was a tough one and he had to take three months off. I had won a tournament last year, but it was like once I finally won the singles tournament, uh, it was the first one I'd won since, uh, I guess, 85 when I was bowler of the year, and uh, I thought, like, all right, I finally won again, and it was like, eh, it's kind of a letdown, and uh, I continued to bowl, but my head just wasn't there, and I'd be 100, you know, 100, 200 under, and I didn't care, and that was the, the part of the most discouraging part, that uh, I wasn't bowling very well, and it didn't bother me. This year's been more satisfying. Albie did get off to a slow start, cashing in only five of his first seven events. But then he got some good news from his wife, Tammy. Mike was going to be a father. Albie went on a terror, winning the Budweiser Open and the U.S. Open in a span of three weeks. Whether it will continue this fall depends on the baby's birthday. I can't be right in the middle of Rochester the first week in the fall. And, uh, yeah, I definitely, I don't want to miss that. There's uh, there's uh, other tournaments, and uh, but there's only one time for your first child. And... Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to go through the whole thing together, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Many tournaments is playing down the center, keeping the ball... With more than a quarter of a million in the bank already this year, the Albies have a good head start on their baby's college education fund. And although the money is nice, and he always hopes for more, his true motivation lies elsewhere. The money is, uh, for me, I'm out here, and I've been out here 11 years, and obviously you have to have the money to survive no matter what career you're doing. Uh, but the money is actually the least, the least of my worries. Uh, I enjoy winning the titles and the trophies. That's, that's the thing for me. Uh, you know, that, that trophy's still there, but the money's long gone by the time, you know, when you look 10 years down the road. What's going to happen tonight? Dave Ferraro, our top seed from Kingston, New York, will chat with Mike Durbin when we return. Ferraro wants this one badly, and we come back, Mike will ask him why. In this game, it takes more control, more power, more precision, more curve. One ball has it all. One ball dominates winning on the Pro Tour. The Black U-Dot from Columbia 300. The Black U-Dot, the ball of champions. Columbia 300, sold only in lanes or pro shops. How far can you drive your car on Phillips 66 Trop Arctic? 100,000 miles. Just by changing your oil every 3,000 miles? Okay, more than 100,000 miles. Oh, sure, Trop Party can protect your engine in the heat and the cold, but over 100,000 miles? How about 200,000 miles? Come on, how far can you really drive on Trop Arctic? 250,000 miles, so far. Phillips 66 Trop Arctic. Long live your car. ESPN is your ticket to Sunday night NFL when the Bills and Bengals go head-to-head. -head. The Bills hope it's payback time as Machine Gun Kelly leads a heavily armed team ready to explode. The Bengals know it's a jungle out there and are ready to defend their turf in this AFC Championship rematch. Mike Patrick and Joe Feisman bring you the head-to-head -head action of Sunday night NFL at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. And with me tonight is our tournament leader in Green Bay, Dave Ferraro. Dave, you were the tournament leader in Austin, too. This is getting to be kind of a weekly habit. Well, hopefully so. Dave, uh, you suffered really a kind of a tough loss a couple weeks ago. You had some really rough breaks go against you, and Joe had some good breaks. How did you mentally adjust to that? Well, I think if I didn't perform when I had to, when it came to the, uh, the last couple frames, it probably would have bothered me maybe last week and this week. But... I felt that I bowled good when I had to make good shots, and uh, the brakes just didn't go my way. And it's just the rub of the green, huh? Yeah, it's the brakes of bowling. Dave, I'd like to talk a little bit about your, your game of bowling tonight. Um, you have somewhat of an unusual style. The first thing that I noticed when I watched you for the first time was how far you get the ball over the foul line out of the lane. Uh, that you kind of really loft it out there. Is there a specific reason for that? Well, when I was younger, my father always taught me to get the ball out on the lane 
uh, because it helps your follow through and, and you can't cut the ball short that way. And on tour, I probably increased my loft because uh, the first part of the lane hooks so much that you have to I eliminate that part of the lane, which uh, on night blocks helps me considerably. Do you vary that at all? I mean, if the lane is tighter, do you try and not get it so far out? I do it, but I don't I don't do it consciously. I do it subconsciously. It's the thing that just comes natural. It's working real well for you, though. Yeah, it does. Uh, another question. On, when you finish at the line, you, you slide very little. There's a little bit in there. Is that intentional or just something that you grew up with? Well, it's just something I grew up with. I, uh, I grew up on hooking lanes, and I think that I just kind of keep the ball straight. I think when I bend my knee and I slide more, I get a lot more hook. And that's just not the environment I grew up on. I grew up on hooking lanes, and uh, I'm not the tallest guy in the world either, so I think that's why I don't have much of a knee bend. Does that ever bother your knee? No, no. One other thing that I've noticed is something that you do that I think only Brian Boss is the only other player on the tour do, is that you spread both your index finger and your little finger when you put it on the bowling ball. What's the reason for that? Well, it's not something that I worked on. It just, uh, just feels comfortable to me. It works pretty well also. Yeah. One other thing, Dave, you have a, a reputation of being a pressure bowler, somebody that uh, if the tournament's on the line, that they'll say, I'll bet on Dave Ferraro. Do you have a special mental preparation? If you need a double to win this tournament tonight, what are you going to be thinking? Well, I kind of look forward to getting that situation. I think, I think if you don't want to be in that situation and you're hoping your opponent's going to miss so you don't have to strike out, I don't think you're going to be good in a clutch, but uh, I look forward to getting in that situation. I see where I was thinking wrong all those years. But one last question, Dave. Uh, Three times this year, you've been in the championship match. Three times you've come up second. What's going to be the difference in Green Bay? I'm going to win tonight. Well, there you have it. He says very simply that he's going to win tonight. We're going to take a small break right now. In the coming match, we're going to have Jim Pensek to see if he can defeat Ron Palumbi. Don't go away, because we'll be back soon. publication tells you about hundreds of great jobs open across the country right now. High-paying professional managerial and technical jobs. The National Business Employment Weekly. Which publication helps you land one of those jobs with articles on how to sharpen your resume, how to shine in interviews, how to market yourself. The National Business Employment Weekly. Which publication helps you do better after you land a great job? Get along with your boss, get a raise, get promoted. The National Business Employment Weekly, published by the Wall Street Journal. It's all you need besides your own ability to land and do well in the kind of job you've been looking for in a part of the country you'll enjoy at a salary you can be proud of. It's all you need. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first-class mail for $35. Call 800-372-3000. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges. Dylan's my grandson. Now, I didn't know what was in my water until I had it tested. Oh. That's why I had a Pure Lux water purification system installed. Pure Lux from Electrolux, a company that's brought you the best quality home products for over 60 years. Pure Lux uses ultraviolet light and carbon filtration. Ultraviolet light to kill viruses and bacteria, carbon for organic contaminants. Pure Lux is so effective because it's the only one with a double pass system. Two passes through ultraviolet light. Uh, Pure Lux delivers great tasting water. 99.99% free of all bacteria and viruses. Instant. Are you concerned about safe drinking water? Electrolux Water Systems would like to mail you an eye-opening report by Water Test Corporation of America. To get your free water report, call this toll-free number now. A marvelous weekend of tennis coming up on ESPN. The GTE U.S. Hardcore Championships being held in Indianapolis Saturday and Sunday. There you see the times for the live action. Boris Becker, the defending champ. He defeated McEnroe a year ago. Both players are back. And any time you get those two in a tournament, certainly you're going to have some excitement. Seems like Becker's lately. Everything lately. Well, Wimbledon and uh, helped... Uh... Germany, West Germany beat the U.S. team in the Davis Cup. Mm -hmm. Plenty of tennis action coming up this weekend on ESPN. Ah, meanwhile, though, we're back in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Red Carpet Lane's semifinal game of the $125,000 Lamode Classic. Pensac and Columbia Jr. 
And everybody's choosing to finish on lane 15, and it seems to be the tougher of the two lanes. Jimmy Pensack has already defeated Tony Westlake and David Ozio. That shirt of his is just changing colors. Brooklyn doesn't carry this time. Waves <laughs> it off. Not happy with that toss, but uh, have to regroup. It's amazing. It seems to take him two or three shots on the left-hand lane to get back to hitting the pocket, but by the late stages of each of the matches, he's been able to do so, averaging 212 thus far on the championship round pair. Throughout the week, he averaged 234.5 on lanes 15 and 16. Well, we said at the top he needed to stay away from the open frames, and he's only had one. So. But as you mentioned, he has utilized every inch of the pocket on both lanes to throw some strikes. Well, that's the type of ball he throws. He is a very alive ball. ball just backed away at the pocket it's amazing as much hook as Ron Palumbi throws that ball did not finish one iota boy at about 45 feet it looked like the angle was just about right the ball was turning over started to flip and you're right it was deflection city and he leaves the bucket on 16. first shot since uh back in January on television you got a tough spare like this he'll probably throw very hard and straight at this I would think Exactly what he did. A little extra loft there, a thumb and fingers. <laughs> As you see, very upright stance. Steps, pretty good size step. Ball comes right down early at this point. Now he catches up at this point. Again, that ball is almost early, no slide. Interesting timing when you study it under the replay. Now watch the spare ball. Look at how far he got that ball out of lane. Eight, nine, ten feet. Somewhere there. No hook at all. All four pins of the ball. Luckily, it bounced first on the maple and then on the pine, right? Got all of that one. That one right through the nose and leaves the three six. So a couple of shots that he'll have to make adjustments on in the third and the fourth. The pair is just not easy, Dan. Uh, the ball is hooking soon, quickly, too early. Well, when you make the adjustment, it doesn't come back and... Uh, Interesting, Jim Pensack is doing the exact same thing in this game that he did in the last game. He's asking for a re rack here in the second frame when he's not working on a strike. The reason I believe that that's unusual is because usually these guys save the re racks until they're going for that double. They don't use it up on a single strike because you only get two. Well, I guess there's no time like the present to get started, though. Huh? I guess that's what he's thinking right now. Worked for him last game. Plus, maybe he feels like the right-hand lane is the better of the two lanes. If he's going to strike and get started, it'll be on lane 16. That could be. The rack wouldn't have mattered there as he kicks out and leaves the 4, 6, 7. And we were just talking about the open frames. He's been staying away from them. Last time he didn't. See the ball hooking right through the heart of the pins. That's 4, 6 lane. And he gets somewhat of a break and they're knocking a couple of pins out but hard and straight nothing kicks out come on Jim she said well he's bounced back from adversity before he's already won twice here this evening now finds himself down by a dozen in the early stages of the semifinal his only comfort is that Palumbi didn't hit the pocket on either shot his first two shots so Better shot. That lane conditioner must really be moving around out there because this is game number three for him on this championship here. You'd think he'd be able to hit the pocket with the opening shot, wouldn't you? You'd think so. Though. Yeah. Stands to reason. Now let's see if Palumbi fine-tunes his game a little bit here on the right-hand lane. He 
did make the adjustment, moved the board to the right, and again, the ball appeared as it can be solid and kind of faded to the back end and left that weak 10. If his ball's faded, I'd hate to throw it see what my ball would do on those lanes. <laughs> that would be a fall away jumper for sure. Uh, Columbia hits the pocket on the right hand lane, but still no success as far as strikes are concerned. There's a, a Miller mop flying around by the foul line. <laughs> he's saying, I want interference, he's saying. A Miller Moth? Yeah. Are you a biology major in college, or? <laughs> That's what we used to call them in Colorado, Miller Moth, but it's just a moth. All mm -hmm. right, okay. 11 pins now for Palumbi. The unusual thing about his game, I think, Mike, is what happens to his arm swing on the way back. Starts with the ball in the middle of his body, kind of wraps it around and straightens up on the way through. Curls that backswing behind his back. Uh, he does a lot of things that I wouldn't teach, you know, but he makes it work for him. I guess it's because he's the youngest of our five finalists tonight. Has tremendous athletic ability. Breaks it down, leaves only the 5-8. Searching for his first strike in this match, but still leads by nine pins. I guess the, the key word in this match would be patience. Don't make the big mistake. Keep the ball in the fairway and hope for the best. See, he moved over there for the spare and it hooked right away. So confusion right now sets in here in the semifinal game, and it's a nine-pin lead for Ron Palumbi Jr. We'll be back with more right after this. 20 years ago, Neil Armstrong and I were the first men to walk on the moon. This year, America celebrates the heroic spirit which put our flag on the moon sea of tranquility. Now you can own this $5 commemorative coin marking this historic event about the same diameter as a silver dollar and painstakingly minted in a brilliant uncirculated finish, this legal tender coin is being issued by the Republic of the Marshall Islands, where America has an important tracking station, issued on the anniversary date, July 20th, and minted only in 1989. This historic coin is available at its $5 face value for a limited time. It reflects American ingenuity and the renewed strength of our manned space program. Order your first Men on the Moon coins today, for yourself, for gifts. Pay the $5 face value plus $1 each for delivery. There's a limit of five coins per order. Call now. And we're going to get another unusual shot as we look at Jim Pensack finishing on lane 15. And Ron Palumbi on 16, both of them right at the same time. You see no slide for Palumbi. The ball behind the hip. Look at the ball at that point now. How's he getting it through there? Somehow it misses his hip. I like Palumbi's follow-through better than Pensek. Pensek has a tendency to come in with that follow-through a little bit and then back where Palumbi goes right straight through it and trusts every shot. That looked like a photo finish to me. Can't win by a nose in that one, can you? Pensek got a few more strikes in that game than... So far, we've seen in this game. Ooh, good acceleration right through the bottom of the swing and the solid nine stands, a twirl by Pensack, and he's not pleased with what happened there. And, and I could just read their mind, you know, they're saying, hey, I got no back end as it is. The, the ball won't finish at the back end, and yet it leaves the solid nine. Watch it cut right through there and chops the five straight off the nine. The pin doesn't come off. Yes. Oh, you rat. So a pirouette for pin sack and uh, nothing but a nine pin spare. Pirouette for pin sack? Yes. Of alliteration there. I, I noticed that alliteration <clears throat> Thank there. Dennis. Didn't say whether you liked it or not. You said you noticed it. Well, okay. It's a nine pin lead for Palumbi, and uh, if it were Jim Pensack right now, he would have penciled a strike in there in the fourth. Ooh, 
more loft on the left hand lane. He likes the result there. Well, maybe he's found out the secret. Definitely seems that you got to get the ball out on that lane here. He's mad about that nine pin. I'd be a little steamed if I were him. That cost him a turkey. Cost him the lead. I mean, he'd been in the lead by uh, 11 pins if he carries that. It was all Palumbi's tournament here through the first 18 games, then he shifted gears. Well, he keeps moving a little right, moving a little right. He finally got, the, got it up to get the strike. But he hasn't hit the 1-3 on lane 15 yet. Watch the loft here. See the ball behind the hip. The follow through. He trusts it. Gets that ball well over the foul line. And just churns him up. Pins never had a chance. First strike for Palumbi through five frames. Winner of this game takes on the top seed, Dave Ferraro. Trusted it all the way. His best shot of the night right there. Clean release. The ball yeah. came off rolling instantly. Watch this. See that heavy fingers there. Over about the third arrow. Out to about the tenth and ninth board. Knocks that flat ten right out of there. Puts Pensek in a position that he has to strike. One more is what he says. <laughs> she knows this game already. Watch that drilling in there. He's looking at the 10 pin. Yes, he got it. One more now for the lead. Great body of a shot putter, wouldn't you think, or a discus man? Yeah. Very strong upper body. Will it carry? Yes! We got a match. So Pensack pivots and strikes twice and turns the tables on Columbia. Watch it. As it drives in here, the six pin just gets the ten. And he's looking at it all the way. Will it carry? Come on. Come on. Yeah. All carry. And now this one's a one pin match. We'll be back with the conclusion after this. send you for a Bud Light, and you bring back... Well, if you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. So, there are no men here, there's an unlimited supply of Bud Light, and we can never leave. Correct. Because everything else is just a light. We can live with that. Yeah. ESPN presents the world's ultimate driving machine. You'll see coverage of the U.S. Open, British Open, PGA Championship, and year-long excitement from the PGA Tour. There's also the precision of the Lady Linksters and fun from tee to green with those swinging seniors. The world's top golfers take on the year's final major test, the PGA Championship, Thursday and Friday on ESPN. The Bills hope it's payback time. The Bengals await this AFC Championship rematch. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann bring you the head-to-head -head action of Sunday Night NFL, live on ESPN. Coming up next week, a tournament that my partner Mike Durbin will be qualifying for here shortly, the PBA Senior Touring Pro Doubles in Cheektowaga, New York, at Thruway Lanes, live at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN this coming Wednesday. You know, I never got the bowl in that tournament as a Turing Pro. Something always happened as we take a look at Daryl Dobbs, the ABC Executive Secretary, Treasurer. Just took over recently. That's right. Uh, down from uh, Greendale, the Milwaukee area, to spend some time with the bowling fans here this evening. And uh, they've been treated here to an excellent semifinal game. Ron Palumbi Jr. and Jim Pensack going at it right now, and we're in the latter stages. It's a one-pin lead for Pensack. Oh, a little delayed reaction. Better late.
worse than never. Columbia pummeled these pins. I thought you were going to say he punished him, but obviously you wouldn't want to use that. So Palumbi turns one more time, and both players now working on three baggers. given up on that shot then all the way through he'd given up he thought it was going high and it is high but still he gets the trip four Pensack asked for a re-rack on lane 16 the last time he asked for a re-rack was in the second frame and he four six nearly left the Greek church got some help and that was the end of that doesn't look quite as confident now pins he's got a strike on this next shot then so both players now with four consecutive strikes as we head now into the ninth and I know that my good friends Jeff Moraz and Dick Grand the sponsor of Jim Penn sack are probably right at the edge of their chairs at this point and this is the biggest shot of the week right now for Jim Jocelyn Jim whipped him right out of there. See that six spin snap that 10 out of there? That's his reaction to it. Back in the lead by one. and high and the which one was going to crack first and it looks like it's Palumbi. For a moment it looked like the ball might hold and stay in the 1-3 but uh, disaster strikes Palumbi in the latter stage of this one. Going to loft it hard try and kick a pin out of the back deck and it won't work so Palumbi with a critical error late in this one tries to take a look at the chances now and the chances are slim and none slim just left town he's down 16 as he heads into the 10th if he would strike out he could shoot 220 which would force Pensac to mark in the 10th frame many matches have been won or lost in that situation Ricochets this head pin over to the sideboard and back to get the 10. A little gentle nudge. test of your intestinal fortitude to come back from a major mistake in the ninth to double up. Now he forces Pensack to at least mark in the tenth frame to move on to the championship. He's just so upset with himself. He made good shots all the way through. Four strikes in a row. Finishes here with three. Seven out of eight. And it may not be enough. Yeah, you're right. A beautifully bold game after the adjustments through the first four frames, but it might not be enough. Two nineteen, well bowled game. Now let's see if the frustration this year continues for Ron Columbia Jr., who has 
Already qualified for 14 top 24 finishes. As we mentioned, only a second appearance in the championship round. And Pensack, who is perspiring profusely, tries to hang on in this one. He says, all right, I can make the four pin, and he needs to make it. Hard and straight at the four pin, hits it dead center, and needs five pins. Stay behind the line, hit the head pin. Five pins, and he's a winner. Well, Red Carpet Lanes has been a great place for Ron Palumbia and also kind of a burial ground as well. Two years ago, he and Les Schisler lost in the 10th frame of the Touring Pro Doubles here when they were top seed, and tonight he's bowled an excellent game and is probably going to come up short one more time. And Pensick backs off. Doesn't want to make any major mistakes right now when he's got the match won. That's enough. More than enough for Jim Pensack of Mayfield Heights. Palumbi with the congratulatory offering for Ron Palumbi here at Green Bay this week. $7,000 to his credit, 224 to 219. So the man from Mayfield Heights advances to the title game. And for the second time this year, he'll try and step into the PBA winner's circle right after we take a look at Bowling News. Get help all around the home with True Value Hardware Stores. Duro Naval Jelly dissolves old rust. Get eight ounces for just $1.77. Liquid Magnet soaks up oil stains. 32 ounces are only $4.99. Two Test Concentrated Laundry Detergent is just $5.99 for a 10-pound box. And then zap grease and stains with Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner. The 16-ounce bottle is only $2.77 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. Last year, Ebonite took you to a new plateau of excellence on Oily Lake with the Thunderbolt. Now the Thunder rolls on with the new Thunderbolt MD for medium to dry lake. The same devastating power core and an exclusive new MD cover that makes it hunt down the pocket and hit harder with less deflection on medium to dry lake. Make some thunder of your own. Ask your pro about the Thunderbolt MD from Ebonite. Welcome to this week's edition of the Bowling News, brought to you by Pizza Hut, maker of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. And welcome back to Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where we're just a couple of minutes away from the championship round final game in the $125,000 Limoge Classic. But before we get to the championship game, the first order of business here this evening is to get updated on the PBA's top 10 leading money winners list. Let's take a look. Mike Albee remains number one despite a rather disappointing summer for the 19-time PBA champion. Dell Ballard Jr. remains in the hunt, while last week's Wichita Open winner and Leva Monticelli has moved into the number three position. Pete Weber, who will be returning to action next week in Buffalo, along with Jess Stayrook, round out the top five. The current PBA Player of the Year, Brian Voss, a finalist here this week, is sixth on the 89 list. While tonight's top seed, Dave Ferraro, regardless of his performance here tonight, will crack the $100,000 barrier for the second straight year. Randy Peterson, who has just returned from a third-place finish over in Japan, along with Tony Westlake and Walter Ray Williams Jr., fill out the top ten. Bowling made an impressive debut in this year's U.S. Olympic Festival. As a matter of fact, all nine sessions for the bowling competition were sold out. And the only sport out of 39 which was able to do so. Some terrific performances there. Winners of the coveted match play portion, which consisted of 12 games, were Linda Nori of Concord, California, and Don Breeden of Dakota City, Iowa. It was an especially rewarding week for the 20-year-old Nori, who also went on to capture three other medals. Other superlative performances were turned in by Debbie McMullen of Denver and Brad Briggs of West Palm Beach, Florida. McMullen finished atop the stack in the singles competition, while Briggs helped lead his team to the gold medal. Now here's a look at the rest of this year's medal winners from the U.S. Festival.
congratulations to all 48 bowlers who competed in this year's U.S. Olympic Festival. And while we're located in the great Midwest this week, now might be an opportune time to help out my old friend Dick Weber, the regional director of the Midwest, and uh, check in on the latest results from the Midwest region here in 1989. John O'Dravenek came up a winner over in Cedar Rapids, while Steve Jarrows finished atop the heap in Decatur. Dale Traber also added a Midwest regional title to his PBA resume, while Pete Weber and Leroy Bornhop also came away victorious in St. Louis and in St. Charles. Moving from success on the regional tour to the PBA national tour, Tony Westlake of Edmond, Oklahoma, is looking to break one of the least known and most difficult records on the PBA books, that of making the championship round finals in five consecutive tournaments. And joining me this evening on the Bowling News is the man who holds the record, five appearances in a row in the championship round, Johnny Petraglia, the current president of the PBA and a PBA Hall of Famer. And, John, let's look back to 1971 when you set the record. What was going through your mind back then? greatest feeling in the world, Denny. I, I felt like I could reach out and touch my spot. I had reached a point, I guess after about three weeks, I reached a point where I was in, in such dead stroke that I was more than 100% sure I was going to strike. I had reached a point where I had already struck, and I just had to let the ball go so that everybody else knew it. All right, so you can relate right now to what Tony Westlake is going through. Four consecutive appearances in the championship round. He has to be drained both mentally and physically. Well, I think he's drained mentally and physically. However, at the, at the moment of truth, like last night when he had to win the game to make the championship round, he won spare six-bagger. You could tell by his face he knew he was going to do it, the crowd knew he was going to do it, and more importantly, his opponent knew he was going to do it, too. The question I have to ask, is it more difficult to make five appearances in the championship round here in 1989 as opposed to 1971? Well, I think the great bowlers in 1971 were as good as the great bowlers that are around today, but today I think the talent is a little bit deeper and uh, much more knowledgeable bowlers out there today. I think that it's a little bit tougher for Tony if he's going to make five in a row than it was 18 years ago. All right, let's talk about the record, perhaps tying the record. If he would survive the match play portion next week in Cheek to Waka, uh, he would end up five consecutive appearances. Will, be, will you be rooting for him in the background uh, next week if he does have a shot? Oh, absolutely. Tony's a great bowler. He's really a help to our sport, and records are made to be tied and broken and i and I, I hope he does it i'll root for him well 10 years from now i hope you make five consecutive appearances on the seniors tour <laughs> thanks teddy <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to john petraglia for joining us this evening on the bowling news from red carpet lanes in green bay wisconsin back with more right after this the new pizza hut pepperoni lovers pizza asks why is everybody always kicking on me just one bite and you'll know this new pizza is pepperoni paradise. Two prolific pilings of pepperoni packed between two extra plentiful portions of cheese. It's Pizza Hut pepperoni picking perfection. New pepperoni lovers pizza. Why is everybody always picking on me? You know why. Making it great. And narrowly missing this week, Jimmy Keith, who finished up sixth. Tom Baker came a long way back, ended up tenth, and of course, Todd Thompson in fifteenth position. And we're going to look at some of the other finishers in our top 24 this week. Yeah, I think we're going to get a look at them. There we are, the great Brian Voss, and of course, last week's champion, Sab Macaron, brought up the uh, 24th place this week. All right, Mike, a couple of quick questions for you. Jim Pensack has never won a PBA championship. Ferraro has. Who has the edge? Well, as far as uh, that is concerned, I definitely think that Ferraro has the edge. As far as who knows this pair better right now, I think that Pensac has the edge. Two completely different players. Ferraro likes to go up the boards and in, and Pensac, oh, he's playing that swing game. He likes to go around. He's the power player. Uh, the experienced edge goes to Ferraro. I don't know. It, it ought to be a good match. What I find interesting is Pensac has beat every champion on the telecast tonight. He's responded to every pressure situation that he needed to. He overcame a solid nine to win that last game. He's pumped. Well, this could be the night for Jim Pensack to step into the PBA winner's circle, but he'll have to go through the top seed in order to get there. Dave Ferraro of Kingston, New York, back with a title game right after this. What's the best brokerage account for an active investor? Ask a Schwab customer. With my Schwab One asset management account, my money's never idle. When I sell a stock or I get a dividend, my cash instantly starts earning income. And it keeps on earning until I make my next investment. When I need to get to my cash, 
or take out a loan. I'd just use my Schwab visa or write a check. Schwab One makes it easy. All my financial moves are right here. And one simple statement. Now, you might expect to pay a lot of money for an account this handy, and not with Schwab One. There's no monthly fee. Now, that's, that's real value. To get your free booklet and an application for the Schwab One Asset Management Account, call toll-free 800-848-8900. That's 800-848-8900. Call now for your free Schwab One booklet. Interested in a better hand soap than that me? I can cope. I don't need no lava soap, no. Regular soap won't always work, but lava with pumice will. Interested? No, no, no. Lava, so don't try to cope without it, so. Or so, air conditioners, pressure. Builder Square. We buy by the train load. Many Direct from top manufacturers. There's no middleman, no frills, no membership fees. And at Builder Square, we won't be undersold. Epic. Builder Square, where the values keep rolling on. Because the more we sell, the lower the price. Tennis greats get fired up in one of the last major tune-ups before the U.S. Open. See the final of the U.S. Hardcore Championships Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern, live on ESPN. I certainly didn't realize they were giving away the Hope Diamond and $18,000 for first place this week, Mike. But what a dazzling trophy for whoever wins between Penn Sack or Ferraro, and the fans, I think, are ready for the championship game. And Ferraro's made an interesting move right away. He's chosen to finish on the right lane, uh, which means that he's saying to his opponent, if I have to get up in the double and throw it in the 10th and throw a double to win this tournament, I feel I can do it. He's waiting for everybody to settle down and sit down. And Concentration there by Ferraro, obviously disturbed by some technicians to the right, but nevertheless, 